joining us for the first time welcome my name is Habiba and today we're going to be talking about how to pick a medical specialty i.e. what kind of doctor are you going to become obviously this is a very important question you are in medicine and now you're trying to figure out what kind of doctor you're going to be uh, what kind of care you're going to give for a large majority of your life so this is a very important question and hopefully the tips that I'm going to give you today um, after having years of experience myself hopefully these tips are going to be helpful in helping you to make you want to make sure you are the best type of doctor for them so I'm just gonna list uh, some of your choices some of it is a little overwhelming to think that these are all the options you have um, and yeah let's see allergy immunology anesthesiology and even within anesthesiology you can go into pain management critical care um, then there's colon colon and rectal surgery which is like five years of residency um, which includes your general surgery plus an additional year there's dermatology which is about four years of residency emergency medicine is another option um, you know emergency medicine you are basically the primary doctor at the hospital in the ER department you're responding to acute illnesses and injury so you want to make sure you're the type of person that likes to do deal with uh, a lot of adrenaline a lot of acute care and sometimes also chronic patients we like to use the ER as just the place to go um, because they're looking for a bed or whatever um, there is pediatric ER there's sports medicine within emergency medicine uh, there's another practice like family practice uh, internal medicine and family practice and internal medicine can be similar except internal medicine we don't deal with pediatrics we don't do children um, our specialty is a little bit more focused uh, family practice is a great option if you're going to be in a rural area and you want to be able to treat and diagnose babies uh, seniors all the way to seniors um, and usually in areas where you have family practice you have limited resources uh, where you don't have other specialties or as many specialties as possible so for example in most cities internists are there and you also have pediatrics for children but again in rural areas you tend to have more family practice and I mention this because I always get questioned about well what's the difference so there um, also let's see you could be a adolescent medicine doctor within internal medicine you can go into cardiology you can go into uh, clinical cardiac electrophysiology pediatrics you can do uh, anything from birth to young adulthood while you're in pediatrics there's plastic surgery I mean these are just a whole list of different subspecialties of course there's psychiatry um, where you're going to diagnose and treat mental illness uh, addictive personalities and addictive problems psychosis all of that medical genetics neurology nuclear medicine OBGYN ophthalmology ortho surgery urology oh lord and I'm sure I didn't even list all of them so it is an exhaustive list of options that you have and now it's up to you to make the right decision um, when you think about the type of uh, practice that you would like to have or the type of uh, work you would like to do do you see yourself practicing taking care of older patients like geriatric patients or do you see yourself taking care of babies or young people like doing pediatrics um, because some specialties will focus more on some particular age groups than others so that's definitely something you want to consider do you see yourself working in a hospital versus an outpatient practice? For example, most hospitalists will work in a hospital, hence they're called hospitalists, um, and so that requires uh, shift work, which means that you're going in, say, at 8 a.m., for example, and coming out at 8 a.m. Sometimes the shifts are 8 to 10 hours and even maybe even 12 hours. So that is something to consider if you 
uh, would like a steady paycheck and you like the opportunity to work, get your work done and you're done for the day, you go home. Usually these shifts are clustered in um, groups of three to four days and then you work and then you're off. So um, that's uh, definitely an area that has been growing since I graduated med school when hospitalists were introduced. This is a growing practice in the past we used to have a lot more traditional practices where you would uh, do inpatient and outpatient work. You would take care of your patients in the clinic and then when they got sick uh, and needed to be hospitalized, you would take care of them in the hospital as well. Now this sort of traditional practice has since been phased out in majority of cities or large um, large um, if you are married if you have children uh, if you are single sometimes your decisions about what specialty you're going to go into will depend on your particular lifestyle needs uh, for example myself personally I used to do inpatient and outpatient care and it was pretty much a 24 7 type of work uh, because patients go into the hospital there isn't a predictable time that somebody's going to get admitted there isn't a predictable time that you are going to get called to see someone so whether or not I do inpatient or outpatient uh, was very much affected by the quality of life that I wanted and being able to spend more time with my family because in my case I had children um, and procedures are you someone that likes um, cutting or basically uh, dissecting repairing would you like to do procedures or are you somebody that would rather not and just uh, read images or um, think about problems and how to solve them for example going into surgery I would imagine you enjoy doing procedures uh, perhaps being a pathologist you would prefer uh, not necessarily to do procedures but your majority of your work might be under the microscope uh, examining cells and things like that um, if you work for example as a neurologist you would be called mostly to do consultations you would be examining patients um, you would be diagnosing patients but not really uh, doing a lot of procedures unless you're doing lumbar punctures um, you know when patients have mental status changes uh, and a fever for example so uh, yes you want to think about are you the type that likes to do procedures or not now during your clinical rotations what uh, what types of specialties did you like um, don't be distracted by you know the uh, obnoxious perhaps resident or uh, an attending you didn't get along with did you like the type of work they were doing or not can you see yourself doing that type of work or not so I think it's very important during your third and fourth year to pay very close attention and ask as many questions as possible because this is your time to figure out what type of specialty you will go into this is the time to interact this is the time to get some hands-on experience that you're going into your choice is this something that you've really thought about you've really had the opportunity to be exposed to or is this something that your parents or your loved ones or your family is pushing you into uh, for example I would say that when uh, when I first started out in medicine I always used to think I was going to go into plastic surgery and part of it was I think because my parent uh, thought that you know I would make a great plastic surgeon I liked working with my hands I liked the type of uh, procedures I saw they were doing but over time during training once I realized uh, the type of training and lifestyle um, I felt like it wasn't a good choice for me so I made another choice so just make sure that whatever you're going into it's not because of family pressure and this is truly a decision that you are going to be happy with I've seen par uh, patients for Sports example do absolutely matter so for example different specialties like let's say neurosurgery 
will clearly require you to have very high scores in step one, step two, and step three. So you want to make sure that your scores are in line with whatever specialty you're uh, planning to go into. So you can actually Google, you know, what uh, board scores each medical specialty uh, requires. So you want to make sure that you're not wasting your time applying to a specialty that your board scores don't actually reflect uh, because then later that can be uh, potentially a hurdle uh, if you don't get into that specialty. What I think about is the specialty that you're going into, um, is it in line with your personality and your scores and the particular lifestyle you would like? For example, um, let's just say I'm a very introverted person, which I'm not, but let's say I was an introverted person, um, then clearly going into maybe internal medicine or psychiatry um, or some sort of specialty where I really have to interact uh, and sometimes even examine patients. Um, let's say neurology, for example, if I don't really enjoy talking to people or if I don't feel comfortable examining patients, then I probably might want to choose something like uh, pathology um, or even radiology where, you know, I am going through data and information and imaging and I'm analyzing uh, material like that and not necessarily always uh, dealing with patients or having direct patient care. So you just really want to think about that because I, for example, have seen doctors, it's crazy, who are in primary care and yet they don't want to examine patients. They literally don't want to touch them because they're uncomfortable. Um, I think that that's probably not a good choice on their part because most specialties will require you to literally touch patients, examine patients. Yeah, be you don't really want to think about the duration of training uh, or that shouldn't be the major reason why you don't pick a particular specialty. You want to pick a specialty that you are really passionate about, really curious about, really see yourself making an impact, not necessarily the duration of training because honestly, it's all long. So you need to accept it. It's all long. It's all a long time in school. But to be honest, after a while, you stop thinking about it. And in fact, it goes by super fast. I mean, honestly, uh, between college and med school and residency, I still looking back think like it went by. Don't think so about good. the amount of money you're going to make going into medicine. Don't think about the income that you're going to generate depending on what specialty you pick. Now I personally kind of have a love-hate relationship with that advice because I do think yes you're going to do well in whatever specialty you pick that you are passionate about. But I do think one thing that our training doesn't always teach us early on in medical school is how much you will make in real life. So the, uh, I think expectation is that most doctors are well off and I totally disagree with that. There are a lot of doctors that pretty much have almost near average incomes and are not wealthy, um, are not rich and are still struggling to pay There's their a chance loan. that you eventually may want to be a cardiologist and it may require just getting more training. Um, and so there is opportunities uh, once you have made a decision to subspecialize. Uh, so, you know, internal medicine uh, docs can become endocrinologists, they can become infectious disease docs. Another I'm just subject giving you that you may not have uh, thought about is high rates of malpractice. You want to think about malpractice rates in whatever specialty you're going into. So for example, uh, anesthesia may have a high rate of malpractice, uh, a very expensive specialty to make a mistake in or to be named in a lawsuit. Uh, anesthesia or OBGYN, you know, the results can be catastrophic. And so you want to think about that 
when you are picking a specialty because sometimes you might be named in a lawsuit and it may not necessarily be your fault but you were part of the team taking care of a particular patient and something you know uh, bad happened and so you get named in a lawsuit so you really want to think about uh, malpractice uh, because it is a scary thing that most doctors don't want to ever experience but it does happen to a number of doctors over the course of their practice so if your clinical rotation uh, at your current medical school doesn't give you an opportunity to make a decision you might want to take an away rotation uh, most medical schools have the option of taking away rotations so uh, this may cost you a little extra possibly or it might be built in as part of your training um, to be able to go away uh, to take training elsewhere picking a, a specialty is not an easy choice however I know there are people who know um, they've always known what specialty they're going to pick um, or they've always felt that they were supposed to be an OBGYN for example and that's good and dandy but you just want to make sure it's a lot deeper than that that your decision is not just something you've just always thought you wanted to do that this is a decision you've really thought about um, you know deeply you've thought about it strategically and that you are not making just something out of an emotional uh, response. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please do me a favor and share it with someone who might benefit, maybe a young potential doctor out there um, or someone in medical school. And uh, if you did, go ahead and give me a like. And I hope you also uh, look out for another video I will have coming uh, next, which is about uh, the scramble and match day uh, and getting into residency itself, uh, my experience and some specific tips you need to consider. And I also will be doing another video about uh, my family uh, getting pregnant in medical school and residency. So look out for that. Thank you so much for watching and take care.